Shalom Mishpacha and Havarim and all who join us here to share in the word. Yere Yahwa for this beautiful day. So this is my second take. I made a video, it took four hours and then I deleted it with one stray finger reaching for something over the um, tablet. Never mind, I'm back again. So at first I was going to say a beautiful morning because this picture that I'm going to show you is the sun coming up over our garden it's beautiful. Anyway, today we're going to start reading the book of Hanok, Enoch. I'm going to make a playlist and I'll include someone else's introduction because it covers so much. So, I hope you've prayed before we start. And if not, just pause and ask Abba Yahuwah to open up your eyes, ears and heart to this reading. So get comfortable and let's begin. Introduction Although there is some controversy regarding whether the book of Hanok Enoch should be included amongst canonical scripture, it is evident that the group of believers responsible for writing the Dead Sea Scrolls held the book of Hanok in similar regard to other books of scripture. A number of fragments from the book of Hanok were found together with fragments from 28 other first covenant books in cave 4 which was discovered and excavated in 1952. After the initial discoveries of Cave 1 and the scrolls contained within in 1947. Of all the caves in the Qumran region, Cave 4 contained the largest number of scrolls by far. They are mostly very fragmentary and it took 50 years to publish them all. Among the hundreds of thousands of scroll fragments, Cave 4 contained a number of fragments but no extensive portions of the Book of Hanok. Chapters 16 and 17, much of 24, 72 to 75 and 80 to 81 are missing, and only extremely brief passages from about 44 chapters survive. The manuscripts date from the early 2nd century BCE to the Herodian period and at least the book of astronomy predates the book of Daniel. Yahuda Jude also quotes from the book of Hanok, chapter 1, verse 9, and Hanok the seventh from Adam, also Navu of these, saying, See Yahuwah comes with his myriads of Kodeshim to execute judgment on all to punish all who are wicked among them concerning all their wicked works. They have committed in a wicked way, and concerning all the harshness which wicked sinners have spoken against him. Yahudah. Verse 1, chapter 1, verses 14 to 15. The book of Hanok was of course known before the Dead Sea Scrolls discovery, and is recorded in Ethiopic manuscripts and manuscripts of five component parts of Hanok have also come to light in Aramaic. Watches chapter 1 to 36, astronomy chapter 72 to 82, dreams chapters 83 to 90, epistle and appendix of Hanok chapters 91 to 108. Okay, so here we go, Hanok Watches, Chapter 1. The words of the Bercha, the blessing of Hanok, with which he barak the elect and righteous, he blessed, who will be living in the day of tribulation, when all the wicked and unrighteous are to be removed. And he took up his parable and said, Hanok, a righteous man whose eyes were opened by Elohim, saw the vision of the Kadosh one in the Shamayim, which the messengers showed me, and from them I heard all matters, and from them I understood as I saw, but not for this generation, but for a distant one which is to come. Concerning the elect, I said, and took up my parable concerning them, the Kadosh great one will come forth from his dwelling, and the eternal Elohim will tread upon the earth on Mount Sinai and appear from his camp and appear in the strength of his might 
from the Shamaim of Shamaims. The heavens of heavens, wow. And all shall be smitten with fear, and the watchers shall quake. The watchers uh, sometimes refer to messengers. So the messengers, the watchers were messengers anyway, um, shall quake, and great fear and trembling shall seize them unto the ends of the earth. And the high mountains shall be shaken, and the high hills shall be made low, and shall melt like wax before the flame. And the earth shall be completely torn in pieces, and all that is upon the earth shall perish, and there shall be a judgment upon all. But with the righteous he will make peace, and will protect the elect, and compassion shall be upon them, and they shall all belong to Elohim, and they shall be prospered, and they shall be Baruch, blessed, and he will help them all, and light shall appear unto them, and he will make peace with them. And see, he comes with ten thousands of his Kodeshim to execute judgment, his dedicated ones, to execute judgment upon all and to destroy all the wicked, and to convict all flesh of all the works of their wickedness, which they have committed wickedly, and of all the harsh matters which wicked sinners have spoken against him. Chapter 2 Observe all matters that take place in the Shamayim, how they do not change their orbits, and the lights which are in the Shamayim, how they all rise and put in order each in its season, and do not transgress against their appointed order. See the earth, and give heed, so that which takes place upon it, from first to last, how steadfast they are, how none of that on earth changes, but all the works of Elohim appear to you. See the summer and the winter, how the whole earth is filled with water and clouds, and dew and rain lie upon it. Chapter 3 Observe and see how all the trees seem as though they had withered and shed all their leaves, except fourteen trees, which do not lose their foliage, but retain the old foliage from two to three years till the new comes. Chapter 4 And again, observe the days of summer, how the sun is above the earth, over against it. And you seek shade and shelter because of the heat of the sun. And the earth also burns with grow growing heat. And so you cannot tread on the earth or on a rock because of its heat. Chapter 5. Observe how the trees cover themselves with green leaves and bear fruit. Therefore give heed and know with regard to all his works, and recognise how he that lives for ever has made them so. And all his works go on from year to year for ever, and all the tasks which they accomplish for him. And their tasks do not change, but according to how Elohim has ordained, so it is done. And see how the sea and the rivers in the same way accomplish and do not change their tasks from his commandments. But you have not been steadfast, nor done the commandments of Yahweh, but you have turned away, and spoken proud and harsh words with your impure mouths against his greatness. O you hard-hearted, you shall find no peace. Therefore you shall loathe your days, and the years of your life shall perish, and the years of your destruction shall be multiplied in eternal loathing and you shall find no compassion. In those days you shall make your names an eternal loathing unto all the righteous, and by you all who curse shall curse, and all the sinners and wicked shall loathe by you. And for you, the wicked, there shall be a curse, and all shall rejoice and there shall be forgiveness of sins, and every compassion and peace and patience. There shall be salvation unto them, 
a pleasant light. And for all of you sinners, there shall be no salvation, but on you all a curse shall abide. But for the elect shall be light and joy and peace, and they shall inherit the earth. And then there shall be given wisdom to the elect, and they shall all live and never again sin, either through wickedness or through pride. But they who are wise shall be humble, and they shall not transgress again, nor shall they sin all the days of their high. Nor shall they die of anger or wrath, but they shall complete the number of the days of their high, and their lives shall be increased in peace, and the years of their joy shall be multiplied in eternal gladness and peace all the days of their life. Okay, I think I should just point out here that in verse 9, chapter 5, it says high and life a few times. Now high is life eternal with Elohim and um, life is life in the flesh here before we die. Chapter 6 And it came to be, when the children of men had multiplied, that in those days were born unto them good-looking and lovely daughters. And the messengers, the children of the Shamayim, saw and lusted after them and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men, and bring forth children. Now they were supposed to be here watching us, not trying to do what they wanted with us. Continuing. And Shem Yatsa, who was their leader, said to them, I fear you will not indeed agree to do this, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin, the great sin of walking their own way not our father's way. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath, and all bind ourselves by mutual curses, not to abandon this plan, but to do this matter, this wickedness, planning wickedness. Continuing, and Then they all swore together and bound themselves by mutual curses upon it. And I'd just like to say, and that changed our history because they chose that wrong action. We could have lived like Adam and Eve were meant to live. Wow. Continuing, part six, verse six. And they were, in all, two hundred who descended in the days of Yared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual curses upon it. And these are the names of their leaders. Sham Latsats, their leader, Arach Leva, Ram Iel, Kokavel, Tamli Eel, Ramli Eel, Dani Eel, Ye Hezkel, Barachi Eel, Ashah Eel, Amaros. Batarel, Anan Eel, Sakli Eel, Shem Shafi Eel, Satar Eel, Suri Eel, Yomya Eel, and Sari Eel. These are their chiefs of tens. So each one of them was in charge of ten others. Chapter 7. And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself, and they began to go in unto them, and to defile themselves with them, just like Genesis 6. And they taught them charms and enchantments, and the cutting of roots, and made them to know plants. And they became pregnant, and they brought forth great giants, Whose, heights, whose height was 3,000 L's. Now, I'd just like to say that the medicines they made were plant medicines, what we call pharmaceuticals today. The Greeks called pharmacaea. Anyway, 
It's another story. Verse 3. Who consumed all the acquisitions of men, and when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind, and they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish, and to devour one another's flesh, and drink the blood, totally demonic. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones, Chapter 8. And Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets and ornaments and the use of antimony, antimony and the adorning of the eyelids and all kinds of costly stones and all colouring tinctures. Wow! Okay, see we're not taught that in our history lessons, are we? We think mankind developed all these things and what, what you can teach us if you just hide history from us. Wow, continuing. Chapter 8, verse 2. And there arose much wickedness, and they committed whoring. And they were led astray and became corrupt in all their ways. Shem Yatsa taught enchantments and root cuttings. Armaros, the resolving of enchantments. Barakiel, astrology. Kokobel, the constellations. Like, astrology. Adam was taught the Matsarot, and we turned it into astrology. And it's not quite the same. You need to go back to Adam's Matsarot to actually understand what it, that was all about not a divining rod. Anyway, it's, it's for the watchers, for the signs. The constellations, Cocovale, the constellations, Yehezkel, the knowledge of the clouds, Arachiel, the signs of the earth, Shamsiel, the signs of the sun, and Sariel, the course of the moon. And as men perished, they cried, and their cry went up to the Shamayim. Goodness me, did you know any of that before? Chapter 9 And then Mikael, Uriel, Raphael, and Gabriel looked down from the Shamayim and saw much blood being shed upon the earth and all lawlessness being wrought upon the earth. And they said to one another, The earth made without inhabitant cries the voice of their crying up to the gates of the Shamayim, and now to you, the Kodashim of the Shamayim, the beings of men make their petition, saying, Bring our cause before the Most High. And they said to Yahweh of the ages, Adon of masters, Elohim of mighty ones, Sovereign of sovereigns and Elohim of the ages, the throne of your esteem is unto all the generations of the ages, and your name, Kodesh, and Magnificent, and Baruch, unto all the ages. You have made all, and you have power over all, and all, our, and all are naked and open in your sight, and you see all matters, and none can hide himself from you. You see what Azazel has done, who has taught all unrighteousness on earth and revealed the eternal secrets, which were in the Shamayim, which men were striving to learn. And Shem Yatsa, to whom you have given authority to bear rule over his associates. And they have gone to the daughters of men upon the earth and have slept with the women and have defiled themselves, and revealed to them all kinds of sins. And the women have borne giants, and by this the whole earth has been filled with blood and unrighteousness. And now, see, the beings of those who have died are crying and making their position, petition to the gates of the Shamayim, 
and their lamentations have ascended and cannot cease because of the lawless deeds which are wrought on the earth. And you know all matters before they come to pass. And you see these, and you allow them, and you do not say to us what we are to do to them in regard to these. Chapter 10 Then said the Most High, the Kadosh and Great One spoke, and sent Uriel to the son of Lamech, and said to him, Go to Noah, and tell him in my name, Hide yourself, and reveal to him the end that is approaching, that the whole earth will be destroyed, and a flood is about to come upon the whole earth, and will destroy all that is on it. And now instruct him that he may escape, and his seed may be preserved for all the generations of the world. And again, Yahweh said to Raphael, Bind Azazel hand and foot, and cast him into the darkness, and make an opening in the desert which is, is in Dudael, and cast him in there, and place upon him rough and jagged rocks, and cover him with darkness, and let him abide there for ever, and cover his face, that he may not see light. And on the day of the great judgment, he shall be cast into the fire, and heal the earth, which the messengers have corrupted, and proclaim the healing of the earth, that they may heal the plague, and that all the children of men may not perish through all the secrets that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. So the watchers told us secrets that we weren't ready for because they wanted to prosper at our expense. And all we get for it is plagues and death, misery and suffering. Well, isn't that great? They didn't know enough to be able to teach anybody anything. And like the people here that go their own way, they think they knew better and they didn't know they were destroying everything. Chapter 10, verse 8. And the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel. To him ascribe all sin. And Joshua said to Gabriel, Proceed against the half-breeds and the reprobates and against the children of whoring and destroy the children of the watchers from amongst men. Send them one against the other that they may destroy each other in battle for they shall not have length of days. And no request that they make of you shall be granted unto their fathers on their behalf. For they hope to live an eternal life, and that each one of them will live five hundred years. And Yahweh said to Michael, Go, bind Shem Yatza and his associates who have united themselves with women, so as to have defiled themselves with them in all their uncleanness. And when their sons have slain one another, and they have seen the destruction of their beloved ones, bind them fast for seventy generations in the valleys of the earth, till the day of their judgment and of their complete end, till the judgment that is for ever and ever is ended. In those days they shall be led off to the abyss of fire, and to the torment, and to the prison, in which they shall be confined for ever, and whoever shall be condemned and destroyed will from thereon be bound together with them to the end of all generations, Ooh. and destroy all the spirits of the reprobate and the children of the watchers, because they have wronged mankind. Destroy all wicked from the face of the earth, and let every evil work come to an end, and let the plant of righteousness and truth appear, and it shall prove a berachah, a blessing. The works of righteousness and truth shall be planted in truth and joy for ever, and then shall all the righteous escape, and shall live till they bring forth thousands of children, and all the days of their youth and their old age, they shall complete in peace, 
and then the whole earth shall be tilled in righteousness and shall all be planted with trees and be full of bercha blessings and all desirable trees shall be planted on it and they shall plant vines on it and the vine which they plant upon it shall yield wine in abundance and as for all the seed which is sown upon each measure shall bear a thousand and each measure of olives shall yield ten presses of oil and you cleanse the earth from all oppression and from all unrighteousness and from all sin and from all wickedness and all the uncleanness that is wrought upon the earth destroy from off the earth and all the children of men shall become righteous and all nations shall offer adoration and shall praise me and all shall worship me and the earth shall be cleansed from all defilement and from all sin and from all punishment and from all torment and i will never again send upon it from generation to generation for ever chapter eleven and in those days i will open the store chambers of berha which are in the shamayim the store chambers of blessings in the heavens wow so as to send them down upon the earth over the work and labour of the children of men and truth and peace shall be associated together throughout all the days of the world and throughout all the generations of men chapter twelve before these matters hanok was hidden and none of the children of men knew where he was hidden and where he abode and what had become of him and his activities had to do with the watchers and his days were with the kodeshim and i hanok barach yahuwah of majesty and the sovereign of the ages and see the watchers called me hanok the scribe and said to me hanok you scribe of righteousness go declare to the watchers of the shamayim who have left the high shamayim the kodesh eternal place and have defiled themselves with women and have done all uh, and have done as the children of earth do and have taken unto themselves wives you have wrought great destruction on the earth and you shall have no peace nor forgiveness of sin and inasmuch as they delight themselves in their children the murder of their beloved ones shall they see and over the destruction of their children shall they lament and shall make supplication unto eternity but compassion and peace shall you not attain chapter thirteen and hanok went and said azazel you shall have no peace a severe sentence has gone forth against you to put you in bonds and you shall not have toleration nor request granted to you because of the unrighteousness which you have taught and because of all the works of wickedness and unrighteousness and sin which you have shown to men then i went and spoke to them all together and they were all afraid and fear and trembling seized them and they pleaded with me to draw up a petition for them that they might find forgiveness and to read their petition in the presence of Yahweh of the Shamayim. For from thereon they could not speak nor lift up their eyes to the Shamayim for shame of their sins, for which they had been condemned. Then I wrote out their petition and the prayer in regard to their spirits and their deeds individually, and in regard to their requests that they should have forgiveness and length. And I went off and sat down at the waters of Dan, in the land of Dan, to the southwest of Hermon. I read their petition till I fell asleep, and see, a dream came to me, and visions fell down upon me, 
and I saw visions of rebuke and a voice came bidding to tell it to the sons of the Shamayim and reprimand them. And when I awoke, I came unto them, and they were all sitting gathered together, weeping in Avel Sail, Avel Sail, which is between Lebanon and Senesa, with their faces covered. And I recounted before them all the visions which I had seen in sleep, and I began to speak the words of righteousness, and to reprimand the watchers of the Shamayim. Chapter 14, the book of the words of righteousness and of the reprimand of the eternal watchers in accordance with the command of the Kadosh Great One in that vision. I saw in my sleep what I will now say with a tongue of flesh and with the breath of my mouth which the Great One has given to men to converse with and understand with the heart as he has given as he has created and given to man the power of understanding the word of wisdom, so has he created me also and given me the power of reprimanding the watchers, the children of the Shamayim. I wrote out your petition, and in my vision it appeared thus, that your petition will not be granted unto you throughout all the days of eternity, and that judgment has been finally passed upon you, even so will not be granted unto you. And from Heron you shall not ascend into the Shomayim unto all eternity. And in bonds of the earth the decree has gone forth to bind you for all the days of the world. And previously you shall have seen the destruction of your beloved sons, and you shall have no pleasure in them, but they shall fall before you by the sword, and your petition on their behalf shall not be granted, nor yet on your own, even though you weep and pray and speak all the words contained in the writing which I have written. And the vision was shown to me thus, see, in the vision clouds invited me, and a mist summoned me, and the course of the stars and the lightning sped and hastened me, and the winds in the vision caused me to fly and lifted me upward and carried me into the Shamayim. And I went in till I drew near to a wall which is built of crystals and surrounded by tongues of fire, and it began to terrorize me. And I went into the tongues of fire and drew near to a large house which was built of crystals, and the walls of the house were like a mosaic floor of crystals, and its groundwork was of crystal, its ceiling was like the path of the stars and the lightnings, and between them were fiery cherubim, 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 and their shamayim was as water. Ooh. A flaming fire surrounded the walls, and its portals blazed with fire, and I entered into that house, and it was hot as fire and cold as ice. There were no delights of life therein. Fear covered me, and trembling took hold of me, and as I quaked and trembled, I fell upon my face, and I saw a vision, the sea, and see, there was a second house greater than the former, and the entire portal stood open before me, and it was built of flames of fire, and in every respect it so excelled in splendour and magnificence and extent that I cannot describe to you its splendour and its extent, and its floor was of fire, and above it were lightnings, and the path of the stars, and its ceiling also was flaming fire, and I looked and saw therein a high throne, its appearance as crystal, and the wheels thereof as the shining sun, and there was the vision of Cheruvim, and from underneath the throne came, and from underneath the throne came streams of flaming fire, so that I could not look upon it, and the great esteem sat upon it, 
and his garments shone more brightly than the sun and were whiter than any snow. None of these messengers could enter and look upon his face because of the magnificence and esteem and no flesh could look upon him. The flaming fire was round about him and a great fire stood before him and none around could draw near him ten thousand times ten thousand before him yet he needed no counsellor and the most kodashim who were near to him did not leave by night nor depart from him and until then i had been prostrate on my face trembling and yahweh called me and his own mouth with his own mouth and said to me come here hanok and hear my word wow oh it's got my heart racing verse 25 and one of the shakoda came to me and woke me and he made me rise up and approach the door and i bowed my face downward Chapter 15 And he answered and said to me, And I heard his voice, Fear not, Hanok, you righteous man and scribe of righteousness, approach here and hear my voice. And go, say to the watchers of the Shamayim who have sent you to intercede for them, you should intercede for men and not men for you. Why have you left the high Kodesh and eternal Shamayim and laid with women and defiled yourselves with the daughters of men and taken to yourselves wives and done like the children of earth and begotten giants as sons? And though you were Kodesh, spiritual, living the eternal high, you have defiled yourselves with the blood of women and have brought forth with the blood of flesh and as the children of men have lusted after flesh and blood as though as those also do who die and perish therefore have i given them wives also that they might impregnate them and bring forth children by them that thus none might be lacking to them on earth but you were formerly spiritual, living the eternal high, and immortal for all generations of the world. And therefore I have not appointed wives for you. For as for the spiritual ones of the Shamayim, in the Shamayim is their dwelling. And now the giants, who are produced from the spirits and flesh, shall be called evil spirits upon the earth, and on the earth shall be their dwelling. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies because they are born from men and from the Kodesh. Watchers is their beginning and primal origin. They shall be evil spirits on earth and evil spirits shall they be called. As for the spirits of the Shamayim in the Shamayim shall be their dwelling. But as for the spirits of the earth, which were born upon the earth, on the earth shall be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and work destruction on the earth, and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst, and cause offences. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women, because they have proceeded from them. Chapter 16 From the days of the slaughter and destruction and death of the giants, from the beings of whose flesh the spirits, having gone forth, shall destroy without incurring judgment, thus shall they destroy until the day of the complete end, the great judgment, in which the age shall be ended, over the watchers and the wicked, even so, shall be completely ended. And now, as to the watchers who have sent you to intercede for them, 
who had been previously in the Shamayim, say to them, You have been in the Shamayim, but all the mysteries had not yet been revealed to you, and you knew worthless matters, and these, in the hardness of your hearts, you have made known to the woman, and through these mysteries, women and men work much evil on earth. Say to them, therefore, you have no peace. Okay, so that's the end of chapter 16. I think I'm going to pick up 17 next time because it's he goes somewhere else in, in his dream then. Um, so we might as well start with that new beginning for him. Anyway, I thank you most humbly for coming and seeing me. Thank Abba Yahweh when you finish for what you understand from this. Take away from it what you feel is true. And, you know, we can only work with Father. And if we don't work with Father, we're going to get it all wrong anyway. And really, I think that whatever we look at, we can look at with the Ruach HaKodesh. That is our Father's Spirit dwelling inside of us. And if we're aware of those feelings and thoughts and the way in which he communicates through us, with us, in us, around us, everything to do with ourselves, then we can be able to discern what these things really mean or what he would like us to feel they mean. I hope that made sense to you anyway. Onward and upward, Mishpacha and Havarim and all who join me here. It's been a beautiful time reading this to you. Can't wait to get the next bit done. Please join me for part 17. Much shalom and much ahav to all of you. Keep pitching your tent with Elohim.